There's one very special person that guides the orchestra. Who is he? Is it the... Uh, I'm sorry. The uh, conductor? The conductor. Excellent. Orchestra. On various uh, occasions at school, I have been called a few names. Uh, a reoccurring one is... A, a stutter head. And a, another one is... A Samra boy. And uh, another one is a Mr. Beatboxer. You know, as a beatboxer would go ticka ticka and stuff like that. But like Gareth, there is one area of Rory's life where he is remarkably stammer free. Hey there, teenage Baltimore! Don't change your channel because it's time for the Corny Collins Show! I take my acting on stage as, as a bit of an escape, really and escape from um, who I am. Uh, when I'm performing on stage, I'm not playing a Rory Melly, a little stammer boy. I'm playing someone else completely different with a, a different with a different background, a different history, a, a, a different feelings and, and different thoughts. It's great because it's like totally fluent on the stage speaking. And the last play he was in, I thought, I great know if he could just speak like that the whole time. You know, well, it doesn't work like that, unfortunately. I really want to make a career out of singing and acting, but my fear is is that if if my summer doesn't improve, then then employers won't hire me. Kids in town. <laughs> It's the end of day one. When the students arrived yesterday, Gareth videoed them all. Last night, we asked you guys to tell us your name, to which all of you struggled. My name is... Sarah Webster. But since then, Gareth has been drilling the new technique solidly. So now we're going to give you, new students, an opportunity to stand up and cancel out that situation. Whenever you're ready, there's no order again. Sarah Webster. Rory Melly. <laughs> Simon Robinson. Today was long hours, it was hard work and they've made a great improvement. But I don't want them to think that, oh, I've done it now, I've done it, and so I can sit back and relax a bit and become complacent. I just need to continue to work hard and hope that I'll be able to get The new students have taken the first step towards finding their voices. Are you finding that you're actually getting used to the technique? Yes, absolutely. It's important to highlight that this method is certainly not a cure. It's something that they'll continually need to work on, like I do, every day. And that's what will determine whether they have continued success or not. Ah, good. 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 What we want you to do is try and speak in a controlled way. 
exaggerated. It's all about using this new method, this new way of speaking. Let's not use any more than four words per breath. No more. Go now, please. I hope to become a sports therapist. Mohammed is a trainee physiotherapist. Whenever I'm in the practicals, I'll get, I'll, I'll get nervous and then I'll probably just like uh, stammer. Talking to patients is an essential part of the job. If Mohammed can't do that, it might mean a change in career. How is how's your day been? Yeah, okay. You yeah, all right? Today, so oh, yeah, that's, that's good. To do. I know what I'm doing, but it's just the struggle of trying to say it. And if I can't say it, then they think that I don't really know it, which I do, but then my stomach gets in the way. But mainly focus on the hamstrings and the, uh, and the, uh, the, the quadriceps and maybe do the IT band as well. To overcome my stammer would uh, really uh, help me with my, with my, with my a career because that means I could do the jobs that I want to do. But if I didn't, it would make me get a job that doesn't involve talking and uh, that would be it. The students are continuing to work hard on their technique, but Gareth has noticed some are finding it more difficult to adopt than others. Simon Robinson. Simon on Wednesday was the most overt, but often the, the easiest to crack because there's less things happening up here and it's more just, this is how I am. It's very clear that I have this real problem and so I'll just do anything, show me what to do. Whereas I think with Sarah, she's always managed to be fluent in situations in life. When you say a word, so like birth and then breakfast, why don't you just stop on the word when you know it's going to be difficult? I can see her sort of questioning why, why we're doing this. Is this much better than how we were speaking before? Well, right now, maybe not, because it's quite mechanical, but... It's a, a means to an end. Because that people are going to know, still know, the stammer. Uh, she's not vocalising that yet, but I can see it. And covert stammerers do that. Gareth decides to take Sarah to one side for some individual coaching. The way that you're using the technique is great. I still feel you can be... More exaggerated, la. Like I'm being now. Gareth Gates. Bradford. Sarah Webster. Suffolk. What sort of ma? Music do you like? Oh. Release the air. Kinds of music. Good. Kinds again. Mm. Kinds of music. Good. I just can't, <laughs> can't get, can't get to grips. With the breathing? With, it sounds so mechanical, <laughs> but I'm trying to. Good, well, that's all we're asking just now. It's harder to take those steps backwards and speak mechanically, of course it is, because you've spent years of trying to make people think they're fluent and you don't have this problem and this affliction. Yeah. And I understand how frustrating it is, I completely understand. We've all been there. Trust me, if you persevere with this, you will see results. Thank you. Cool. <laughs> As a covert stammerer, Sarah tries to conceal it from others, especially around her family and boyfriend, Carpenter, Will. I've learned to live with the stammer now for 25 years. So a couple more. She's become quite good at hiding it and very good at thinking on her feet to try and find different words. And it's obviously not a great way of dealing with it because quite often her sentences don't make the best of sense when she's desperately searching for a different word as rather than use a word she'd struggle on but uh, 
hopefully with the program she can get past that and use any word she wants to use. I'm quite happy I was speaking to my friends and family and I'll, and I'll be able to speak quite well fluently really and just have the odd well. stammer here or there but I just want to be able to speak fluently at, at all given times not just when I'm in you know my comfort zone. Be careful. As a nanny Sarah works with children every day but her real dream is to become a teacher. When I first came out of university this teacher said to me, you know, you'll never be able to become a teacher because of your stammer and you'll just be, your life will, well they said your life will be a misery because you'll be ridiculed by the children. So to be able to, over, to be able to, you know, not have this stammer, I point, you know, that would just be amazing. Another long day on the course has reached its final session. One of our biggest challenges and fears is the phone. And so we're going to really focus on facing that fear head on. When the students leave the course, they will be expected to make phone calls every day. Until now, 28-year-old Londoner Matthew Ogeni has avoided the phone at all costs. Uh, would you like to make a phone call for us? And would you ask for Summerfield Supermarket okay. in Birmingham? Okay, thank you. So it's ringing now. Uh, hello. Is it possible to have the phone number for the Summerfield in Oh, fuck's sake. In B B Birmingham, please. That's enough, mate. Thank you. Thank you. What do you do for a living? I work as a professional artist m m m m m model. And what does that involve? That, <laughs> that <laughs> basically <laughs> involves me um, posing for artists in the nude. So you must work out then? I do. <laughs> I do. I do work out a lot, yeah. Matthew has been modelling for eight years. Finding a job where his body could do the talking came as a revelation. I thought, well, I don't have to speak here. I'm just laying down nude on the sofa or sitting down in a chair and that sort of <laughs> appealed to me. Matthew's lack of confidence in his voice could hardly be in starker contrast to his life as a model. He even takes bookings for hen parties. Have my clothes up, I have a sense of power that I can't, I can't get from when I'm speaking. You're very muscular. Thank you. I get that a lot from people. <laughs> his career may be flourishing, but his ambitions stretch further than disrobing. I feel that I'm, I'm like using this as a sort of, you could say, this distraction in a way. It's like how I look. It cannot only get me so far, you know. If I had more control over my speech, I would go into acting. But I need, I need, I need a voice. I need to be, to be like heard. Yeah. How are you? Well, thank you. Matthew again. Simon Robinson. My last holiday was in the Isle of Wight. I'm excited. I love cooking. Once a fortnight. Well, thank you for calling. It's been nice. Bye for now. Bye for now. Bye for now. Bye for now. Cheers, bye. That call was like a dream. It was like, it wasn't me speaking, but it 
counts as that. But it... Counts as that. But it was me speaking. <laughs>